Hi everyone, my name is Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. Now, I've had this Quark eyepiece, which is a solar hydrogen alpha adaption. Now, what this eyepiece does is enables you to connect to any telescope, providing you get the correct Quark eyepiece depending on if you're using a short focus refractor or a long focus refractor, Newtonian, Schmidt Cassegrain, whatever telescope, you've got to get the right eyepiece. I've, I've been using this for a good year or so, and I must admit, if you want to get into any hydrogen alpha, taking images of the sun in hydrogen alpha, or by looking through the eyepiece, then this is a must have. Really, for sake of buying a dedicated solar telescope, which costs thousands and thousands of pounds, you can get yourself one of these, probably just over a grand, which sounds a little bit expensive. Don't get me wrong, it is expensive. It's miles cheaper than buying a fully adapted telescope designed for hydrogen alpha. With this eyepiece, you can attach it to any telescope and you'll get that hydrogen alpha effect. Again, please check out that video at the top. I did do a review on this. I highly recommend it that if you're considering, if you're considering buying or interested into hydrogen alpha, please check that video out that will give you a good idea how capable this eyepiece is. So, I've had it a good year or so. I enjoy the images from this eyepiece. It really is absolutely outstanding. The only bugbear I have, and it is annoying, and there is a few people that will agree with me, is I can't understand why Daystar have adapted a 4.2 times Barlow lens incorporated with this solar eyepiece. I really can't understand why they've done that. I think that it's to uh, to give you close-ups of the um, of the surface details of prominences or filaments. You name it, it does help towards that category. However, I would think a two times Barlow incorporated would be okay. Now the biggest problem with that is I do miss the wide field of the sun, the full disc solar, which I'm really, really wanting. But that means I have to pay for a dedicated solar telescope to do that. Yes, you can get a 60 millimeter solar telescope with hydrogen alpha capabilities but the main problem with that is you're going to spend another grand or so just buying a telescope just for a wide field view in hydrogen alpha i just don't get that so i've been testing out this quark and i must admit i am struggling to get the results it's not an easy task to undertake but in this video, I'm going to take you through my journey on trying to get a full disc image using this Quark eyepiece. And I'll be honest with you guys and girls, this was tough. I've been around on a lot of forums. I've been on a lot of YouTube videos. There is hardly any information regarding trying to get a full disc image through a quark eyepiece. It really is very hard to try and find that information. So in this video, I'm here to try and test this out, see if I can get a full disc image using this quark eyepiece, and to help you guys and girls who also have owned this particular cool product, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna try my best to try and get this to work. I'm sure it's not impossible. So in this video, 
please hit a like button and again if you're new to this channel please subscribe to my channel don't forget to share this video out because if you share this video out it's going to help someone else maybe having the same problems as what I'm having and don't forget if you click on subscribe and you click on all remember to click on all that will keep you notified for any new videos that will keep you updated so if you're interested and you want to find out more what I'm going to do trying to achieve the full disk image of the Sun using a quark eyepiece please keep watching and let's do this I'm going to show you some list of items that I'm going to use to achieve my goal. Now at the moment I have got a Rover Valley Optics 60mm refractor. However, I really want to use that as a dedicated wide field telescope for Nebula. It does have its own guide scope and uh, it's really good with a DSLR camera and uh, really is a fantastic telescope and again if you're not seeing that video please check it out from the top so I was going to consider a 60 millimeter refractor so the closest one I have got is this is this one now I've had this telescope for quite some years this is the 66 millimeter refractor and this is from Alta Astro very good telescope for the price and this is going to be the telescope that I'm going to be use as my main imaging setup for the full disk solar work. So it's already got its solar finder. Again, I've done a video on that. And uh, fantastic telescope. Don't get me wrong. It is old. But the reason why I want it like this because it's got a solid tube in there. And it can withstand a lot of heat when you're imaging uh, the sun. Uh, as you can see there, this is fantastic for wide field, wide field with its focal length of 400 millimeters. Now I was going to use the short tube 80 millimeter refractor. You can use that telescope as well with its focal length of 400 millimeters, and that's got a f ratio of five. So you can use the 66. It's probably the limit for wide field uh, but the 80 millimeter short tube you could use that as well for full disk imaging as well so anything that's 80 millimeter or below is really ideal for full disk imaging of the sun so this is the setup i'm going to use on my is this telescope now i will incorporate the mirror diagonal all right so it's going to incorporate that. I don't want to have too much extension tubes all right, sticking out at one end. Because one, I will get balance problems. So I want to keep with the mirror diagonal in its place there. Because it does actually help with balancing. So as you can see with my last setup, when I imaged with my dual setup, with me 80mm mm Lunt and this together, it was a perfect combination. I've got the ultimate imaging setup for the sun. All right, so that's my solar setup. Fantastic little uh, setup I've got there. And I must admit, I've got it just right. So my next item is this. This is the ISI 178 mono camera from Zoo. This will be my next addition to achieve full disk imaging. But this is a one inch and one eighth CMOS chip. Now this is a 64.4 megapixels with a resolution of 3096 times 2080 resolution pixel size. Uh, well, the actual pixel size for this is 2.4 microns and the sensor size is 7.4 millimeter by 5 millimeter. So it's quite a substantial sort of chip. Uh, the reason why I've got this is, is that this camera has a decent sensor for the price. Now, 
I'm not going to go far too deep with this, all right? But the reason why I got this camera is that I was going to go for the ESI 174 camera, but that camera is literally double the price of this one. However, the 174 does have a bigger sensor than this, and it does actually have more pixel sizes as well. The more, uh, it also has a bigger resolution size as well. And that would have been ideal for solar work. Unfortunately, the 174 camera is beyond my budget, so I went for the 178, because I think this is probably the camera within a budget for a lot of people. So, yeah, I was, my main aim was to get the 174, but I'm gonna try out the 178. This will be a tough challenge because the sensor size is quite big, but it's not big enough. But I wanted to show you guys and girls, if we can do this, this may help you save a little bit of cash in the long run. So I have no guarantee if, if this is going to work. However, this is a decent camera and, uh, and it will deliver some outstanding images. So we're not gonna go too deep on that. So fingers crossed that this camera works. So my next item is this. I've got this 0.5 times focal reducer from Antares and I bought this from Rover Valley Optics. Again, price range costs between 50 to 70 pounds. So again, check out the description below and that's where I've got this nice cheap end focal reducer. Now the reason why I got the focal reducer is to reduce that the effective Barlow lens built in the quark eyepiece. And with that Barlow lens within that quark eyepiece that has a 4.2 times Barlow lens, this focal reducer will help not only half it, but also reduce it down to around about 0.34 times reduction. So this will half it, but if you use series of spacers like these, now I've checked out the, the official agenda website, please check it out in the description below. Within that agenda, page there is a good web page regarding fork reducers and this one is like a typical general use 0.5 times fork reducer now this has effective range of around about 79 millimeters focal length so that's like the minimum for that 0.5 reduction to be achieved however you can extend this so much to reduce it down to 0.34 times reduction. So using series of spacers or tube extenders, I call them, you can increase the reduction more. You have to check it out at the bottom. The agenda website explains everything, how they work and all that. But I'm not going to go too deep on it. But one thing that I've taken on board with on that website page is with this camera has a back focus of 12.5 millimeter. With these spacers, I, uh, I worked it out. So with this setup here, I've worked it out with including the back focus of my 12.5 millimeter all the way up to the focal reducer. I worked it out overall extension is around about 103.7 millimeter extension in order to achieve that 0.34 times reduction. So yeah, you've got to 
use series of spacers. Now this is the these are M48 threads. Because the one thing this the, the main problem with this Volker reducer is that this only accepts M48 threads. So you're gonna need M48 style tube extenders, all right, in order to fit this overall into your setup. So with that 103 millimeter extension complete, I should be within limits of the 0.34 times reduction. With that 0.5 times reduction, with it only works within 79 millimeters, but I have to add an extra inch of 25.4 millimeters extension to get that ideal 0.34 times reduction. That 103. 0.7 millimeter extension what I have is I have a, a T1 I have a T2 to M48 adapter this gives 5.2 millimeter extension so I have 12.5 here 5.2 millimeter extension here then I have a 30 millimeter spacer here then I have a 5mm spacer here. Then I have a 11mm spacer there. And then I have two 20s here. We have now got a total length of 103.7mm, which is still within the working limits of this focal reducer. We should be within the 0.34 times required. As you can see there, top tip, you can see the sensor has actually increased in aperture. So that's one thing you can tell. If you move the focal reducer back and forth, you can tell straight away when you can see the sensor gets bigger. So the more you extend, this focal reducer outwards the more the sensor gets bigger and that's one way to tell how the focal reducer works it's a very simple way to do it one thing I've noticed is once you get past a certain point the sensor does actually get blurred that means it's out of focus it's actually out of focus above the focal reducers limits so the more you extend it out, the, the bigger the reduction. Uh, if, you, if, you want to in, if you want to reduce the reduction, you then move the, the reducer further in towards the sensor. And that's how the focal reducer works. I hope this one helps you guys and girls. You then grab your quark. I have a two inch eyepiece adapter for the quark. And you always place the focal reducer behind the eyepiece. You never have a focal reducer near the blocking filter because what that will do, it will reduce the blocking filter's effect to minimize the heat generated from entering the optical path. If you put a focal reducer or any ball or lens in front of that blocking filter what you're going to do is effectively increasing that heat which will then burn out all the electronics inside this quark eyepiece it will damage the atalon and it will then damage the camera sensor so you always place the focal reducer at the eyepiece end never the blocking filter end all right that is really important with this setup now we should be able to get a four disc image of the sun
So then guys and girls, the moment of truth. As you can see, we've got a nice day today. Sun is out and uh, I must admit, I've got everything ready. I've got my setup. And as you can see, we've got the 66 with the ISI 170E8 mono camera and we're already fixed onto the sun and we're going to take a look and see if it works so as we can see just bear with me guys and girls so obviously I was just going to adjust my focus And as you can see, we've got the the sun. We're not quite central, but uh, we're just going to up it up. Right. So I'm just going to adjust them out, and there we go. As you can see there. We have got oh, a perfect disc of the sun and if we just dim down the exposure so that you can see you can see the uh, the detail on there so we're focused on the image and I must admit what a fantastic result and uh, I'll do a screen view and record it through my uh, computer but it's definitely worked that is absolutely amazing we've achieved our goal well 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 guys and girls what have we got here as you can see i'm using my uh, video live screen so that you can see the full disc of the sun so at the moment i'm not quite in center I've noticed using the uh, the setup with the quark and the 0.5 times focal reducer that you've got to get the sun bang on the middle. All right, so you've got to get it into the middle because there is some mild vignetting or like internal vignetting. As you see there, we've got the whole disc fully focused, and uh, we've got the whole sun in there these are the my settings uh, we've got mono 16 I'm gonna drop it down to mono 8 because my frames per rate wasn't great so I'm gonna maximize the frame rate so as you can see here we've got the the, the sun now we're up to 50 uh, 50 frames per second there's my settings for exposure and uh, as you can see there we've got a nice shot of the sun there's a lot of detail, we've got a few sunspots, we've got a few filaments, there's quite a few um, prominences as well. Not much, on, not much activity on the prominences, but we've still got that detail. And as you can see there, the main goal is to show you guys and girls that this is possible, providing you use the ASI 178 mono camera better with the 174 which is a much more bigger sensor however with that camera it's a lot more expensive so I've gone for the cheaper option and it's definitely worked and as you can see there we've got the old entire disc in there with a lot of detail providing you get it bang on the middle all right we're going to start capturing that data and what amazing result we've got there we're going to start the capture uh, of the sun just three minutes uh, that's all we need to do so there we go we are catching up we're getting so we're getting around about yeah so we did have about 50 frames per second but now dropped down to about 2.1 and the reasons for that is that I am recording this so I've got my video recorder showing you guys and girls but again, I'm prepared to show you guys and girls 
the real results yes I'm gonna lose frames per second but I'm prepared to show you guys and help you out that this is possible all right and as you can see absolutely staggering results so we'll capture that data we're capturing as an ABI file as well you can capture it in serial uh, files which is better because you do actually get more data so if you're capturing serial you have to convert that into pip using pip convert that serial into ABI and then that will process that but again it depends on how you want to use the data personally stick to AVI files because you can you can use that data it's easy to process but as you can see we've got a lot of detail there just bear in mind I think we've got some kind of internal vignetting so I don't know what that is but it seems that at the bottom it's a little bit soft at the bottom so I'm not quite sure why that is but we've got good scene and uh, absolutely fantastic so we've got about a minute left of this three minute video bear in mind this will be a huge file so be prepared to allow your computer to have a lot more space so you need a big hard drive so I only using a two gig hard drive or a two terabyte hard drive which is not enough personally if you're going to capture videos of the Sun or any of the planets or the moon then if you're taking video files you need plenty of hard drive space and believe me you go through it like no tomorrow and a visual like that could be around about four gig to even about eight gig of video that's a lot of video and don't forget I am recording through my laptop and my laptop is literally on overdrive so as you can see we've got three minutes we've got three seconds left and what it do will do is the camera does buffer so as you can see at the top the camera will buff uh, to try and keep some of the frames all right so allow the camera to capture up that data that is sort of in the process all right just let it go through let it capture that data all right and uh, what I will do is once I've stopped recording of this live shot I will be taking it again because uh, again whatever you're using you do lose that frames per second so you need as much memory as possible and even though my laptop is running at 16 gigabyte of RAM you know, and I've got a 2 terabyte hard drive alright it's still not enough and even though I've got a 2.4 gigahertz processor alright it struggles like hell so this is the thing guys and girls you when you're doing video shots you, with this camera you've got to have a good high-speed laptop or computer to do this so as you can see there uh, the Sun is slowly drifting out so we'll have to recenter it once the uh, the once the camera is finished uh, buffering those frames it does take a while but uh, you don't forget you're using a lot of memory here but these are my settings here as you can see there
So then guys and girls, as you can see, I must admit it has worked with the 05 times focal reducer. So the camera, fantastic images, don't get me wrong. However, I am still not happy with the results. As you notice in that last images of the sun, wide field, you notice that it's very sharp in the middle so you'll see the sunspots and a lot of the filaments in the middle dead center are ultra sharp along the outside edges they are very blurred and even in the promises areas that you see around the edge are not sharp enough so yes I know I've used quite extensively a lot of adapters and I must admit it does work with a 0.5 times focal reducer it is the cheaper option don't get me wrong providing you buy the 178 camera ideally if I had the money and the resources I would have got the 174 camera but I don't have the funds for that so with that I got the 178 because I think that's probably the cheaper option and yes it's a big enough size sensor but don't get me wrong the 174 is better but it's double the price and that's what scares me the most so alternatively I would have got a bigger sensor and that would have been better in the long run However, as I mentioned before, you've got to be careful not to oversample or undersample an image. So forget the ethos of bigger sensors are better. If you're using a certain telescope, please check out the field calculator. It's in the description below. Don't get me wrong, if you use that field calculator, it, providing you were in the factor of one to two, you will not under or over sample an image. So you've got to be careful. Avoid this. A lot of people think bigger sensors are better. It's not strictly true. You've got to make sure whatever telescope you're using, you get the right size sensor for that particular telescope. And that is definitely true because you'll see that in your images. So even though I'm not oversampled or undersampled, yeah, the sensor's just not big enough. So I'm I want in the 174, but that means I will over but that means I will be oversampling my image using that 0.5 times sensor. So you've got to be careful when you're using certain telescopes. So yes, the 174 camera is a bigger camera with a sensor but the sensor size the microns is what you're looking at it's it's too big all right here this has got very small sensors microns at 2.4 I believe so 2.4 microns is better for a wide field short focus refractor using bigger pixels microns in other words or are more suited for bigger telescopes all right and that's what I'm trying to get at bigger telescopes with longer focal length is probably the better ones for uh, that camera all right so avoid this misconception again you've got to check out that calculator this will help you through astronomy tools that will help you decide on which camera you want to pick so yes, even though my image wasn't quite, it wasn't under or oversampled, there is, I think the main problem I've got is probably the 0.5 times focal reducer. Because I'm extending the, the actual air gap, trying to get as much 
of the reduction as possible, as you increase it out, you start to get distortions through this 0.5 times focal reducer. And that's why I think what's happening here. So, yes, the 0.5 times is a cheaper option. Okay, it's 50 pounds, but there's a downside to it. Yes, I did achieve the full disc image without a doubt. I'm very pleased with that, but something's still not right. So, I need to further investigate what is actually happening. All right, so I need to do something more. It's not perfect. So we're going to check out this product and uh, keep watching and let's do this again. Now, I had to bite the bullet, spend a bit more money, which is typical within this hobby. So I had to bite the bullet, fork out another £269, which worked out around about £279. And I got myself this imaging focal reducer. Now this is from Daystar and this is serial number FR2D2. So FR2D2. That is the product number for this Daystar focal reducer. Now, as we take a closer look, it's okay package, it could have been better. But, to be honest with you, what you get with the package is, you get your focal reducer, it does have nice two caps, and you do get your 20mm extension tube. So that's what you get from Daystar. First impressions, good quality products without a doubt. So with this fork reducer, this is purposely designed to use within the quark eyepiece. Bear in mind, with this setup, using this fork reducer, you're going to need the dedicated quark two inch eyepiece holder all right for this to work again not much information from daystar regarding this which is a bit of a disappointing uh, to be honest with you so with this setup this will only fit Providing you've got that two inch eyepiece holder. Again, you've got to spend another 40 pounds just for the adapter alone. And basically this replaces the inch and a quarter standard format to fit two inch format. What I don't understand is why can't Daystar include the two inch adapter already included with the eyepiece. I don't get that. But somehow you have to buy this also separate for enable to you to fit this focal reducer. However, what we've got here with the focal reducer, this is a non spherical abbreviated focal reducer, which means this focal reducer will have no curvature. And what you saw in the image using the 0.5 times fork reducer, I'm hoping that this fork reducer from Daystar will eliminate that distortion. It also has baffles within that fork reducer to eliminate glare. Also, with the 20mm extension tube, it also has baffles as well. I do like how Daystar included screw-on cap filters which is great because it does eliminate dust from getting in and uh, it's only a focal reducer but as you can see there it is high quality products yes I know it's expensive with this setup alone you can use uh, different adaptions to fit all right to get your reduction with I'm with 
with the uh, the package what I don't get is there's no instructions on how to use this focal re reducer which is a real shame so I don't really know exactly what is the ideal air gap for this focal reducer to work within the 0.5 times limit now on the website it can reduce down to 0.34 times as well or 0.33 times it's a bit hit and miss so how I'm guessing this is for this fork reducer to work should be around about 55 millimeter air gap so providing on a typical camera like a DSLR camera an ideal air gap is usually around about 44 millimeters then you add 11 mil for your T-ring adapter and then whatever and then you should screw that in completely 0.5 times focal redu reduction needed but that only works with a DSLR camera the, two millim uh, the 20 millimeter extension you fit between the T-ring and the camera and that will give you the 0.34 times reduction however again you still got to spend a bit more money on adapters so what I've got here in order for me to achieve the 55 millimeter air gap with my zoo ISO 178, 178 camera this has a back focus of 12.5 millimeter here I have two I have T2 threaded extension tubes and the good thing about this is they'll connect directly onto the zoo camera what I have here is I have a 15 millimeter tube extension then I have a 13 millimeter tube extension here it's got a variable threaded T2 adaption I've extended that up to 42.5 millimeter so you add that with the 12.5 millimeter I should be around 55.5 millimeter the good thing about this variable adapter is I can always increase or decrease the air gap with this I then combine this with my 20 millimeter extension tube from Daystar so with that 20 millimeter extension I then fit the quark focal reducer in place we should now be achieving around the point three three times as you can see here you'll notice that the sensor has gone bigger all right you can just see it there so here we should be getting that point three three times reduction so now we can then fit the complete setup in there like so and there you go we should now get the point three three times reduction required in order for that quark to achieve full disk of the sun so as you can see there despite despite the focal reducer you still need the two inch format eyepiece holder then you've got to pay, fork out a lot more money for the extension tubes in order to do this I totally agree this is not a cheaper option but it's the only option that I can think of now fingers crossed is this going to work
So then guys and girls, here we go. It's Wednesday afternoon, testing out the Quark with the new Quark focal reducer and we've got the extension. I've had to extend it slightly and as you can see with this setup we're still using the same camera and uh, I really can't wait for this because uh, I've done a lot of uh, planning and preparation for this and as you can see you can tell with the focal reducer you can see it there focal reducer just there all right and uh, let's see the results and I must admit I've done a lot of hard work trying to get this sorted and as we can see I'm just going to uh, just brighten up the image and as you can see we've now got a decent image of the sun entire disc I had to extend the uh, focal focal reducer a little bit which was not ideal because it didn't actually fit in the actual sensor but I managed to do it and it, I must admit it was it was some difficulty so we have done it we have got the image we've got decent tracking it does look like a decent image from my view but the camera's not showing it so as you can see what I had to do see here I had to extend it so I had to extend a little bit of extension there so yeah I was a bit I was going to try and get it the ideal 42.5 with the 20 millimeter extension but I had to extend it a little bit more so I will put the description I will mention it but how much I've extended I don't know exactly because I've had to do a bit of trial and error so as you can see there we've extended it a little bit more than it should be so it's not the ideal 62.5 that I hoped so as you can see there I've extended it a little bit more which is not ideal because it only just didn't quite fit in the camera sensor so I cheated a little bit and uh, I must admit we've got a decent image there I mean it's not it's you can't see it there but what I'll do is I'll do a live view so that you guys and girls can see it properly so as you can see we didn't get quite the full disc so what I'm going to show you is how I achieve the full disc eventually is I've had to add I have to add the extra 13 millimeter extension tube on here and it is quite simple to fix we basically unscrew the existing 42.5 extension we then add the 30 millimeter here like so and then we then add it straight onto and we screw it directly onto the 20 millimeter extension and there we go so what we've got now with this setup now we should be around about 75.5 total extension so as you can see that's the only way we can achieve that full disc image through this sensor so that's the my setup what i've got there so we have the 12.5 millimeter back focus of this camera we then have the 15 millimeter extension tube the 13 millimeter extension tube with that we've already extended it using a threaded thing on there so we use a threaded tube in there to extend it to 42 
We have a, and also here, now we have a 30 millimeter extension tube, then the 20 millimeter from Quark, then the fork reducer. So then guys and girls, as you can see here, I'm just gonna get it center. And as you can see, we've got some decent detail here. Let me just get this. The, the tracking is not quite, but it's a lot better than the, the other day when I was testing out the 0.5 times fork reducer. So as you can see there, look at the detail there we've got. We've got some nice crisp views there. And I must admit, uh, we've got a prominence just up here. All right, we've got prominence there. We've got a nice sunspot there. Those are filaments as well, and uh, yeah, with this slight extension, I will let you know how much I've extended. I don't know exactly because I literally was trial and error, but the first result, I didn't quite get the whole disc in the sensor. So the the ideal 62.5 that I calculated wasn't that great. So I've extended probably around another 12 millimeter. So it's probably around about 74.5, I think. I'll let you know anyway how much I've extended it. But as you can see there, the the actual quark fork reducer has improved the image quality. And as you can see there, we've got the entire disc. I think everything in the detail is shown there, so we've got a nice crisp image. So much better than the uh, the cheaper 0.5 times for producer. And here's my settings. Yes, I'm using Mono 8, and I'm using a smaller capture size and AVI files. But what I will be doing is, once I've stopped recording, I will be capturing this data in serial files and Mono 16, which would be much better. But as you can see here, massive improvement from the last imaging session that I used with that cheaper 0.5 times fork reducer. And I must admit, it is worth spending that £279.
Well, 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 guys and girls, what do you reckon? Absolutely fantastic. We finally got the full disc image and we've got a quite a lot of detail almost quite to the edge not quite but we managed to get the full disc just with the 178 camera and using this D-Star focal reducer is definitely a must so yes I, I totally get it for a focal reducer it is really expensive but this focal reducer definitely works in conjunction with the quark eyepiece it is a real shame that the 0.5 times focal reducer didn't quite work that i expected but don't get me wrong you've seen that image a lot more crisp almost to the edge if i just shorten this spacer air gap a little bit more i reckon i'll just get it bang on so as you can see there we've got the, the image of the sun with decent results much better and i must admit the d star focal reducer is definitely the key winner to get this to work what i don't understand is it's a real shame that the 0.5 times focal reducer uh, didn't quite work as well but it still worked we still got some decent results and we still got a nice image so consider that as a cheaper option providing you got the 178 camera or depending what telescope you're going to use it really just depend on what camera you're going to use for that with the Daystar Quark focal reducer, one thing I have known, noticed that it is actually a non spherical abbreviated focal reducer, which means that it does actually flatten the field. So you're not going to get some of the curvature around the edges as much. So depending on how much of the reduction, yes, if you're going to increase the reduction to 0.33 times then you might start to get the slight curvature however if you go down to 0.5 times you won't get none of that through this camera but it does depend on what size sensor you're going to use so for sake of the price that did actually put me off I highly recommend if you want a much better images and much better result through the quark eyepiece then the D-Star focal reducer is definitely the key factor for this the good thing is I'm very lucky that I haven't got any of weird artifacts where if you're using a mono camera you get this like ripple effect like you get like some kind of like ripple effect in the image and usually you have to use an eliminator adapter to tilt the eye to tilt the camera so that you eliminate that horrible ripple effect in that image luckily i haven't got that so i don't i do not need the eliminator adapter for that so i'm very glad i haven't i don't need to do that so with the setup I've got there, I have got none of that interference and I've got a nice clean image, almost, and I mean, I'll be honest with you guys, almost to the edge. Not quite though, but it's damn sight better than the 0.5 times focal reducer, without a doubt. So would I recommend it? I would get this 178, but again, I would recommend the 174 mono camera it is much bigger sensor but you you got to check which telescope you're going to adapt to it you don't want to under sample or over sample an image so you've got to make sure you get the right camera for that 
and definitely I would recommend the 170 it is a fantastic solar t it is a fantastic solar camera without a doubt but the 174 is better for that purpose I would give this four stars because it did give me some decent results yes you do get better frame rate if you go close-ups if you reduce the screen size resolution you do actually get faster frame rates better than the ASI 120 but it does have a buffer system which means you're not going to lose your frames so whatever frames if you're using a slower computer like I was having problems with my laptop it does buffer some of that missing frames and gains it back so I do like the camera how it's performed with that so I will recommend this four stars and for the D star quark focal reducer I would definitely recommend that despite the price if the price was a little bit cheaper even if it was 50 pounds cheaper it would be better I will give this four and a half stars if it had if, if, it, if, it, if it was a little bit cheaper I would definitely give this five stars without a doubt but it's a serious must have for the Quark eyepiece if you want better results. So that concludes this video. Again, if you like watching this video, please hit a like button. I have spent a considerable amount of time to get this right to help you guys and girls who are having similar problems like this. I hope this video has helped you massively. Again, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe onto my channel. And don't forget to share this video out because it's going to help people out in the long run who are having same pro similar problems what I've had. And if you're a new subscriber, don't forget to click all. By clicking all, we'll keep you notified for any new videos that I publish out very, very soon. So it has been a very long video. For sake of the asshole of had to go through I've finally got the quark performing for full disk imaging so thanks again thanks for watching and I wish you all clear skies